Okay, so we want to discuss two notions which relate to linear transformations. One is called the kernel of T, denoted by ker T. The other is called the image of T, denoted by M T. And uh, they're, not, they're not too sophisticated, but they play very important roles and we have very uh, specific and important things to say about them. Okay, so first of all, what are they? So one way of, of, of uh, 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 showing or, or thinking of a function, which you may have encou encountered maybe in calculus, is in terms of uh, balloons like this, or potatoes, or whatever you want to call them. And so this, this, is, this kind of represents V1, the domain space of the function. This is V2, the range of the function. And the function is arrows going from V1 to V2. Okay. Now in general, if we have a transformation T, a linear transformation, before we know it's linear even, just as a, as a function, as a map between these two spaces, it has to know what to do to every element here, okay? And send it to somewhere here, okay? Not necessarily every element here is a T of something from here, right? So the way I'm going to kind of express this idea is by putting an arrow like this and an arrow like this. this these two arrows indicates that they really cover everything in V1. By definition of a function, T has to know what to do to every guy in V1. But what we get inside V2 is not necessarily all of V2. These are on, the only guys that are actually T of something, okay? So is it clear what this picture expresses, okay? So this, this thing here, this thing here, inside V2, this is called the image of T. These are all the guys that are in fact T of something. Whereas somebody here could be an element of V2, but it's not T of something. Okay, the image of a map, the image of a linear transformation is precisely the same thing as the image of a function. Nothing different, same word and same idea. Only the guys that are actually obtained by the transformation. Okay, so the image of T is some partial set to V2. We're going to see in a minute that in fact it's a subspace, not just a subset, but a subspace. What is the kernel of T? So we already saw that a linear transformation always satisfies that it carries zero to zero. That we know. So if this is zero, if this is zero inside V1, there's also a zero somewhere in V2, right? Every vector space has a zero. And we know that zero is carried to zero. This is always this is always true for any linear transformation, right? We proved it. That was the end of the previous lesson, right? But there could be other guys that are carried to zero. Not necessarily only zero goes to zero. There could be other vectors here that T sends them to zero, okay? So let's make here uh, another inner balloon like that, and these are all the guys that are not just carried anywhere, but the T sends them to zero. Clear? This is the kernel of T. This is the kernel of T. All the guys in V1, the T sends specifically to zero in V2, okay? So let's write the formal definitions now. But if you understand this picture, which is just a way of picturing things, then this is really it. This is really the definitions. So definition uh, one, K 
Ker T, the kernel of T, is the set, the set, this is how we denote a set, of all vectors in V1, all the vectors in V1, such that T of V is zero. That's the kernel. All the vectors, which t, sends to zero. Good? Clear? And the image, let's write this somewhere else because it's in our way. So that's the kernel. The image of T, the image of T, by definition, is just the set of all T of E's, all the guys of the form T of E, where V is any vector in V1. The set of all the images of elements in V1. Hmm? What did I write upside down? No. It's the set of these guys such that V is in V1. It's not the set of Vs in V1 such that T of V. That's not a statement. So the, the image of T belongs to vector space 2. Right, right. It's very, very straightforward from this that care T is a set of vectors in V1. So KRT is a subset, a subset of V1. It's a theorem, not a difficult one, that in fact KRT is a subspace, but we're going to need to prove that. Okay? Image T is a subset of V2. Again, a theorem that it's a subspace, not just a subset, but a subspace. Okay? Okay. So before, before we prove theorems, which we're going to do, but before that, let's do a bunch of examples. Okay, so here's our first example. Um, so let's call it example um, three. So you may ask, why am I calling it example three? Because I'm going to write example three, and then example four, and then examples one and two are going to be the examples we discussed in the previous lesson, which we already verified that they're linear transformations, but now we're going to ask what are their kernel and image. Okay? But they're a bit more complicated. These are easier, easier so first three and four, and then back to one and two from the previous uh, lesson. Okay? So example three is going to be the zero map. The zero function. What is the zero map? It's defined as T of V equals zero for every V. That's what T does. Okay? It takes your entire V1 and sends everybody to zero. Killer transformation. Okay, so first of all, before we discuss its kernel and image, we have to uh, convince ourselves that it's indeed a linear transformation. Okay, so it's linear. Is this the right it's? It's linear since, back to the definition, it's still here on the board, in order for a linear for, for a map to be a linear one, it has to satisfy these two properties. That's all. Okay, so let's verify it. Very, very easy in this case. So it's linear since T of V plus W is what? Zero. Because T of anything is zero. That's what T does. All, it, all T knows to do is to send you to zero. Okay, so this is zero. And in particular, zero has this property of being the same as zero plus zero. And this is T of V plus T of W. Do you agree? And what is T of alpha V for any alpha and any V? Zero, because all T knows to do is to send to zero, right? And this is the same as 
Um, sorry? Alpha times zero. Alpha times zero, which is the same as alpha times T of V. Good? So it, indeed it's a linear map, but we have to verify it. Okay, when we just give a prescription for a map, doesn't mean it's linear. Very easy to give nonlinear maps. We just saw an example earlier, right? So it's linear. What is its kernel? What is care T for the zero map? Remember what the kernel is. All the guys that are sent to zero. Right, it's all of? V1. V1. All of the uh, 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 domain space. Everybody gets sent to zero. Do you agree? What is the image of the zero transformation? Zero. You have to be a bit more precise. Zero. Just a zero vector. It's the singleton zero. It's the subspace that contains only the zero vector. Do you agree? And this is the zero vector in V2. Everybody gets sent to zero. Clear? Okay. So that's this example. Um, let's do another example. Let's call it example. Let's take a new... But be before that, I want to mention one thing. Um, pay attention. This is, it, it, we're we're going to get there in a couple of, of lessons, but pay attention to dimensions here. The dimension in this example, in the zero map, the dimension of the kernel is whatever the dimension of V1 was. It's the full dimension. Whereas the dimension of the image is zero. Okay? There's some, the sum of these dimensions adds up to the dimension of V1. Do you agree? That's not a coincidence. That's not a coincidence. Okay? But that will show up later, but do pay attention to this in other examples as well. Okay? Let's do example four on this same board. We don't need too much space for it. So example four is again another very concrete map. It's called the identity map. The identity map even has its own notation. It's denoted by I, I for identity. And what it does is very simple. I of any vector is the vector itself, okay? And in particular, I goes from V to itself. It's not a V1 and a V2, it's the same V, okay? So I is a map that sends any vector to itself. Doesn't do much, in fact. Okay? But yet it's important. Okay? Clear what is the identity map? Is it linear? Okay? So you're doing this, and you're right, and it's rather obvious, but we have to verify it. And in fact, there's almost nothing to write, right? So let's just look at the definition. So is what is I of U plus V? I of 2V plus V. No. You take two different vectors, U and V. I of U plus V is U plus V. I doesn't do anything, right? I of U plus V is U plus V, which is the same as I of U plus I of V. Do you agree? I of alpha V is alpha V, which is the same as alpha I of V. Do you agree? Okay, let's write it. I, I see that some of you are intrigued by this. So, linearity. It's not difficult, it's just a matter of, of absorbing the definition. That's all there is to it. Linearity. So, I of u plus v. By definition, it's u plus v. That's what I does. And this is the same as I of u plus I of v. I of alpha v is alpha v. That's what I does. Doesn't do nothing. That's the same as alpha I of v. 
because I of E is just V. So it's a linear map. Okay. What's its kernel? Who does this map send to zero? zero Only zero. So the kernel, the kernel of I is only the zero vector, right? This is the zero vector, the set containing only the zero vector in V, in the domain. Do you agree? What is the image of the identity map? Which vectors are I of something? All of them. So it's all of E. Every vector is I of something, which something itself. Do you agree? Okay. So we have here the other extreme of example three. The kernel is as small as it can ever be, because zero is always in the kernel, because we saw that any linear transformation sends zero to zero. So this is as small as it can be, and the image in this case is as big as it can be. It's everything. Okay. And the dimension of this is zero, the dimension of this is everything, and they add up to the dimension of the range space. Again, not a coincidence, it's going to be a theorem. Okay? And not just any theorem, we're going to see that that's precisely a restatement of the rank nullity theorem. Remember that thing? Okay, we'll get there, I'm just... Just throwing out hints at you. Okay, good? Okay, so these are, these are really extreme cases, and both are rather boring transformations, right? Both don't do anything interesting. Either this one just sends everybody to zero, and this one sends every guy to himself, okay? Now let's go back to examples one and two, which were the examples we discussed in the previous lesson, and see what their kernel and image are, okay? So example one, I'm gonna quickly remind you Example one um, was uh, the transformation from R3 of X to R2 of X, polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 and polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2, that sent a polynomial to its derivative. Remember this example? Okay. And we verified already that it's indeed a linear transformation. Okay? So what I'm asking now is what is the kernel of this transformation? So you have to translate the word kernel into its definition. The word kernel means what are all the polynomials whose derivative is the zero polynomial? What are all the poly polynomials such that t of them gives zero? And you know the answer, it's a question in, in calculus, right? What are all the functions whose derivative is zero? Constance. Right, only the constant functions. So the kernel of T is the set of um, constant functions, constant polynomials. It's, it's not the set of constant polynomials. The way I wrote it, it's just all constant polynomials. Do you agree? Those are precisely the polynomials whose derivative is zero. Good? What is the image of T? What are all the polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 which are a, which are a derivative of something, of some polynomial? All of them. Why? That's true. Why? How do you know? I give you a polynomial in, in, uh, of degree 2. 5x squared plus pi x minus 3. Can do the opposite operation. What's the opposite operation? I don't know the word in English. Integral. Integral. <laughs> it's the same word in Hebrew. Okay. So the image is everything. It's the entire space V2 because every polynomial of degree 2 is the derivative of some polynomial of degree 3, and you can explicitly find it. Find the indefinite integral, right? Find whatever it was a derivative of. Good? So 
Once again, just for the impression, what's the dimension of the kernel? No, not zero. One. It's spanned by one. By the constant polynomial one, all constant polynomials are scalar multiples of the constant polynomial one. Right? Do you agree that this is a space of dimension one? We didn't even state yet that this is indeed a subspace. Okay, we're, 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 we're just looking very into the future because I want you to already have a feeling when this, when this theorem eventually arrives, I want you to feel, hey, we know that. We saw it in many examples. Okay? So do you agree that the dimension here is one? What's the dimension of this? Not two. Three. Polynomials of degree less than or equal to two are spanned by one x and x squared. Okay? So this is three. This is one. They add up to the dimension of the range, uh, of the domain space, which is four. Right? This is a space of dimension four. Okay? Good? Okay. And finally, Example two, I'll remind you what example two was. Example two was t from, I, I, in fact, I'm doing two prime, the example of the example, okay, not the general one. It was t from r2 to r2 given by uh, t of a vector was the matrix 1, 2, 0, negative 1 times that vector. And again, we already verified that this is indeed a linear transformation. Okay? So what I'm asking now is what is the kernel and what is the image? Okay, so let's see. And here we're going to need to work a bit. We're going to need to do some calculations. So what is the kernel of this T? So let's think out loud and, and, and decipher what we're asking. Okay? What is the kernel? The kernel is all the guys, all the xy's, all the xy's that satisfy that t of xy is zero, right? The kernel is all the guys that t sends to zero. So what do they need to satisfy? They need to satisfy that this is zero, that 1, 2, 0, minus 1 times x, y is zero. That's the kernel. Do you agree? All the vectors in the domain space, which is R2, such that t of the vector in the range space is the zero vector in the range space. Okay? What do you see here? What is this thing? System. Not just any system. Homogeneous system, exactly. So we're looking for all the solutions of this homogeneous system of equations. Do you agree? That's precisely the kernel. Okay, so let's write that. So let's just rewrite this in various ways. So it's the set of all guys of the form x, y, such that um, x plus 2y and minus y equals zero, right? Do you agree? And, well, if minus y is zero, then y has to be zero, and if y is zero, x is zero, and we easily see in this specific case, because it's two by two and very straightforward, okay, that the only vector, the only xy's that satisfy this system of equations is the zero vector. x has to be 0 and y has to be 0. Do you agree? Okay. But you can see the relation between the kernel and the set of solutions to a homogeneous system. Remember what we call this? The set of solutions to a system? What it was in terms of the matrix, the coefficient matrix? That was what we called the null space. Remember? So cur t, when t is given by a matrix, is in fact the null space of that matrix. Right? So I told you there's a relation between our observations
to the rank nullity theorem, there it is. Okay? I'm just collecting some observations, just paying attention to things that are going to show up as very precise theorems a bit later. Okay? So is what I said clear? Do you see that if T is given by, given by multiplying by a matrix, then its kernel is precisely the solutions to the homogeneous system for which it's the matrix of coefficients, and that's precisely the null space of the matrix. That's how we defined it. Okay? Okay, what is the image of this T? Okay, so uh, you have to convince me. You're saying it's everything. Okay. Well, remember, you're living in two different, in two different spaces. This is a subspace, and we don't even know yet that it's really a subspace, but this lives in R2, whereas this lives in R2, but they're different R2s. Okay, but if, if, if you're believing the theorem that we're hinting to, then the sum of the dimension of this and this has to be 2. And since this is, has dimension 0, this better have dimension 2, and therefore it's going to be everything. Okay, but that's cheating. Do you agree that that's cheating? It's true, but for now it's cheating. Let's calculate it. Let's see that that's in fact the case with the only tools that we have right now, and I don't see any theorem on the board. The only tools that we have right now is the definition. Let's see what the image is, okay, by definition. So the image is all the guys, ZW, all the guys, ZW, in the range such that ZW is T of somebody here, such that ZW, ZW is something like this, such that there exists, there exists X, Y, such that 1, 2, 0, negative 1 times X, Y equals ZW. Do you agree? That's saying that it's an image. It's T of something. Okay? So what are we looking for? We're looking for ZW. Oh, careful, careful, right? There's XY and there's ZW. This, this takes a bit of careful thinking. Okay? Slowly. Okay? We're looking for all the guys ZWs such that this system has a solution. Okay, we're not looking for the solution, we're looking for existence of a solution to this system. Do you agree? Okay, so when does this system have a solution? ZW are now fixed. When does this system have a solution? What determines if it has a solution or not? The rank, right? Rank nullity. This is the nullity. This is going to be the rank, right? The rank of what? The augmented matrix and of, the matrix. of A and A star of the mate, the coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix. Okay. So we're asking, we're asking. Um, let's maybe use blue, which I happen to have here. So there exists X Y such that this. Uh, is satisfied such that this has a solution. So let's write it here. This has a solution if and only if R of A equals R of A star, right? That was the criteria for having a solution. And it has to equal N, the full rank. N here is what? Two. Two. Equals two. Right? So, uh, and here the, the rank of A is indeed 2, right? It's already in, in echelon form. Doesn't matter what I put here, it's going to be equal to the rank of A star, and it's going to be equal to 2, right? So, this is a fact for this equation, right? Therefore, for any ZW, there's going to be a solution. 
Do you see that? For any ZW you take, there's going to be a solution. Because R of A is going to be equal to R of A star, and it's going to be N. It's going to be 2. Okay? So this is, in fact, maybe a bit confusing, but you have to think carefully about what we're asking. What is the definition? So since in this case, R of A equals R of A star equals 2, maybe I should point the arrow the other way. Therefore, this equals the set of all ZWs. For any ZW, there's going to be a solution. And this is just saying that it's all of R2, all of the range space. Good? So you can see that when the transformation is expressed as a matrix, as multiplication by a matrix, the dimension of the kernel, or the kernel, is just the null space of that matrix. And the image is the rank of that matrix. Okay? And therefore, we know by the rank nullity theorem, they add up to dimension of this plus dimension of this, dimension of the null space plus dimension of uh, uh, the set of solutions, adds up to n to the dimension of this space. Okay, that was the rank nullity theorem. And in fact, this was very close to proving the, the theorem we keep mentioning, but only for the case where T is given by a multiplication by a matrix. Okay? But remember what we hinted earlier, any T is gonna, can be expressed as, in, in, in a non-trivial way, there's gonna be work involved, any T, any T, even this T, huh? Right? This is a transformation sending a polynomial to its derivative. How on earth do I express this in terms of a matrix? Okay, it's not obvious. Do you agree that there's something that has to be done if I somehow want to express taking the derivative by a matrix? Not trivial, okay? but it can be done in a very precise way. And after that, this theorem would, would in fact be exactly the rank nullity theorem, just from a totally different point of view. Okay, good? Okay, so what I want to do next, it's going to be next time, um, we've seen all these examples of calculating the kernel and the image, we've seen the definitions, but there, there are some even very uh, simple things that we said, but we haven't proved yet. We need to prove that the kernel is a subspace. We didn't prove that yet. That the image is a subspace. Okay? And some more statements about the role of the kernel and the image that relate even to notions about functions. So, for example, there's going to be a, a statement that says that the transformation, the map, is one-to-one -one if and only if the kernel is trivial. Only zero is in the kernel. Okay? You can start thinking about why that's true. We're going to prove it. Okay? So we need to collect some more of these ideas, of these trivial, or not non-trivial, but basic, very basic statements, and that will lead us to more, to more uh, 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 advanced statements, like the rank nullity theorem viewed from this point of view, and like the, the statement, which is, which is one of the most, one of the goals of this course, saying that linear transformations and matrices are two ways of looking at the same thing. Every linear transformation can be expressed as a matrix. Every matrix gives rise to a linear transformation. We just saw it, right? Define the transformation as AV, okay? But vice versa is also true, and that's going to require some work. That's where we're heading, okay? So we'll stop here for today.